Hello lovelies! I'm Casey Renee and today we are going to make a spooky themed gunny sacks dress in collaboration with Costube for Gunny Saxoween. Okay, I know it's mid-November. I feel like this is a new tradition that I've got going on where I'm like, let's just release a Halloween video in the middle of November. I did it last year with making Eva a zero costume video, and here we are in the middle <laughs> of November, and I am releasing yet another Halloween video. Here's the tea, y'all. I meant to release this like right before Halloween, and I just fell behind. So I had the fabric, I had cut the fabric, I had made a mock-up, and then it was Anime Week in Atlanta, and I was like, I don't have time to make this. And I didn't wanna just not make it. So here we are. This is yet another collaboration with Costube and a bunch of us basically just making some really cute gunny sacks dresses. And um, I'm super thankful for uh, Gwen Shenanigans for hosting this collaboration. I will link their account below as well as the full playlist of everyone involved with this gunny saxoween um collaboration with all of that being said let's get started all right so to start off i'm going to use this pattern as kind of my like base and i want to go with the longer sleeve and then the skirt i'm going to do on my own this skirt is really nice and i'm sure this could be doable but um, I wanna do a full circle skirt with a ruffle. So we're gonna just use basically the top half to get what we want. The main fabric that I wanna use, and this is a lot of black, so I'm sorry if it all starts to like mold together. This is a black velvet. It's leftover from my Morticia Adams dress. And I don't think you're gonna be able to see how rich this is. I'm gonna do this for the majority of the bodice and then add this lace here. Um, to be like my some of my top detailing and I'll pull this over to the white so you can see kind of that Then for the skirt the main skirt and sleeves. We're using this fabric. I love this fabric I saw it instantly and I knew like when we were talking about making these dresses I was like this is it. This is my fabric, but I only got four yards of it So that'll be enough for a circle skirt and the sleeves and that's about it so then I have this left over from last year that um, I'm gonna use for the ruffle, as well as um, the cuffs on the sleeves. So I have a little bit of like stripe detailing. And I think I wanna try to do, depending on like how much I have and like what this, this with that looks like, I think I wanna do like play with the stripes. I don't know which direction I want them to go yet, but we'll figure that out. So then I have black lining that's just cotton. I have a zipper. I do want it to have a fake button up panel, but I don't know if I have buttons. And so that might be a deal breaker. Then I bought all of this. These are $2.99 for five yards. And it's not a lot, but I thought this would be really pretty at the end of the ruffle. And then I also thought at the top of the ruffle, if I have enough of this, I could use this. So this is where we're at. The first thing I'm gonna do is cut this pattern piece out the bodice and make a mock-up with the sleeve so I got to find some mock-up fabric and then um, once I've done that I can um, figure out how I want to implement this into this so yay here goes all right I just wanted to show you real quick I decided because I almost I inevitably always have to do this so I want to just do it for the mock-up I added an inch and a half in between like here like I cut on this line to lengthen it and I did it for this one this is also gonna get cut out on a fold because this is my front panel and if I do buttons they're gonna be a fake front button and then I added three quarters of an inch to the back because this is supposed to be cut on a fold and this is where my zipper will go which will go into the skirt portions i haven't done the sleeve yet but basically this is where we're at and hopefully i won't have to lengthen this later or like from this stage to the next stage i can literally just go boop boop so we'll see how this turns out awesome so here we are with the mock-up it is very big like really really big so the three quarters of an inch i added in the back for the zipper taking that out um i can also if i use both hands close it <laughs> like that and there's at least several inches 
that I have in my hand here. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but I basically am gonna make this two sizes smaller. So this is on the size 14 and I'm gonna make it on a size 10 and go from there. I also don't like the length of the sleeve. I'm gonna lengthen the sleeve by about three inches so that it'll go to here and then the cuff can go in this section here. Um, I do have long arms, but I also wanna be able to like do this and stuff in this dress, you know? So, um, I want my sleeves to be longer. The addition of the length is actually perfect because when you think about adding like a skirt to it, it's gonna go here, which is where my belly button is. So addition to the length is perfect. The dart placement is pretty good. The neckline I really like as well. Okay, I lied. I'm gonna make this one size smaller because I realized when I look at my pattern piece, if you see here, that first one is pretty big and that second one is even just almost as big, you know? So. All right, I'm gonna make it one size smaller. Okay, so it's been a week because I was at Anime Week in Atlanta and uh, now I am home and I have edited a video and I'm ready to sew again. So here we are. I have uh, my ruffle cut out. I believe these are my sleeves. Nope, these are my skirts. I think I have pockets somewhere. I know I cut out pockets, but I, I think I have them somewhere. Um, do, do, do. Oh yeah, right here, we got some pockets. Pockets, sleeves, and then the bodice pieces. And like we've discussed with the bodice pieces, I still need to do the markings for the darts and just get going on them. Um, I'm still, I still feel like this black is really black, but I'm also just like, not super concerned, just not super concerned. So right now, I'm gonna get going on this velvet stuff. I have to hand baste it before I can sew it, I believe, because it's velvet. Um, I also have to get all of the darts in, sew the pieces up, and then I can add the uh, trim. Let's get going, I guess. This is gonna be more of a chaos vlog, not quite a how-to vlog because my life right now. <laughs> okay, okay. I know it's kind of hard to see because it's black velvet and black velvet, you know, does not like the camera doesn't like it, but I've got this in, I've got the whole bodice pieces put together. Again, yeah, I'm sorry. I can't see it. And then there's the lining. Ooh. Ah, there's my little, uh, I don't know, whatever that stitch is called understitch right here. Woohoo, I did it. I did the thing. Okay, so now over there, sorry, that's my ring light. Over there are the sleeves and what we're basically doing is adding gathering stitches at the bottom and the top and then I have to make the cuff and gather the, uh, the bottom into the cuff. They overlocked the two side edges. Then we've got right here the circle skirt portion that has also been overlocked the bottom edge as well as the uh, edges that aren't the selvage. And the pockets got overlocked and now I'm just, I think I'm gonna do sleeves, even though I know those might take longer, at least assemble the sleeves and then assemble this skirt and then get both attached to the velvet 
And that means I can hand sew the lining bits in during Dungeons & Dragons tonight, because you all know, D&D time is my favorite place to hand sew. All right, so I decided instead I'm just gonna go straight to doing this skirt. And um, then now I'm gonna work on the sleeves, but basically here it is so far. I'm still having a little bit of wonkiness in here, so I might have to top stitch this and then like, I don't know, try to press or like get this to lay down because it's not laying flat and it, it looks wonky. But I do have a skirt and the skirt does have pockets. So we are good to go on that. Um, I'm gonna get the sleeves going. Right now, I literally just cut two five by nine inch pieces for the cuff. And then if this is enough, I don't think this will be enough. Oh, it might be enough. I'm gonna try to use leftover like scrap dream weave for these. Oh, it'll be enough. Um, so I'm gonna use these two pieces of scraps for stabilizer. This is that dream weave ultra. It's what I used on the uh, velvet. And we're gonna get these cuffs made and get the sleeves gathered into them. Sorry about my phone. I am waiting for an important call. <laughs> and then once we um, get all of the sleeves like made up, I'll attach them. And then tonight I can hand sew them during D&D. &D. All right, this is where I'm at after D&D. &D. I sewed all of this in. Uh, so like all the lining and stuff, I can open it up and show you. It's got cuffs, the skirt is attached. I think she's looking pretty cute. I mean, obviously she's just pinned at like the neck and to the waist. But um, next, or today, it's the next day, I need to add a closure for these, add the black velvet at the bottom of this, like the, the detail strip, and then make the ruffle and add the ruffle. And the last thing is a zip in the back. Um, this is my ruffle material. Oh yeah, and I'm gonna add this at the back of the ruffle. So ruffle material that we're gonna do this step first. And I'm gonna actually show you that because I'm gonna try something so that I don't have to use pins. We're gonna try something, we're gonna experiment, okay? Cool. Okay, so this is my plan. This is my velvet. Ooh, ah. Uh... I've got a ruler and I'm gonna have my ruler basically placed at about two inches of every couple of inches along the hem of this circle skirt. I have, if I can keep it in my hands, <laughs> Stitch Perfection Tape. This is a, this was half an inch wide. It's basically a double-sided tape that is water soluble. So the first time that I wash this dress, it will completely disappear. Um, it's also, it won't gum up your needle or anything. So this will not mess up my machine, but it will also uh, just dissolve in the first wash. Uh, and the whole point of this for me right now is I don't wanna have to use pins on this. So I'm actually gonna move this there. We're just gonna do that. And then I'll move this to my next spot and then I will go and sew all of this down once it is placed. Have I measured if I have enough of this uh, velvet? Nah. <laughs> I have not. This could be bad news bears, we will see. All right, so she's almost done. Um, basically, I bought a 14 inch zipper and I was like, this will be long enough because they were out of 22 inch zippers and it only makes it to my waist. And like, my waist is the whole reason I need a zipper. Like my waist seam there is like, that whole measurement is 28 inches. Whereas like, my hips are 38, my bust is like 32. So like, I can't really get the dress on unless I have like an opening at the waist. So I've ordered a 22 inch zipper. It'll be here tomorrow. I will finish it then. It still needs snaps as well, but I've kind of just been like, blarga blarga, this whole project. Like I love this dress. Okay, first of all, I love this. I can't wait to twirl in it. Y'all when we twirl, oh my gosh. 
But like, I don't know what is up. I've just felt so unmotivated this whole week. That's not true. I felt motivated to do admin stuff. So like I updated my website today and I like have been doing research for some marketing stuff. <sighs> anyway, it just, it is what it is. Um, I'll have, I'm not even going to film putting a zipper in. You'll, I'll just show you the reveal from here. So can't wait to show you this on and twirl in it. Thank you all so much for joining me as I make this Gunny Sacks dress for my wardrobe. I have one more wardrobe-like video coming up next week. Basically, I'm going to be making a few pieces to wear in New York City on my trip to New York City coming up. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Um, so stay tuned for that video and following that video. We're gonna do a deep dive on Glinda's bubble dress, so you stay tuned. Now, that brings me to my next topic, which is if you would like early access to this content or access to the Discord channel where I am updating my Glinda research in time, head on over to patreon.com slash Cosplay. That is my members only website where you can help support the channel and you get really cool things like access to the Discord channel, monthly live streams, and early access to video content. Thank you all so much for watching this video and thank you for your continued support, especially through the um, like Halloween crazy time into this holiday season. I am so excited for the fun like vlogmas that I will be doing again this year. I'm going to mix it up this year and I think you will all like it. I don't know. We'll see. But thank you all so much and until next time, may all your dreams come true.